Everybody good? Well, if I'm loading here and I have an AD, that's where that bullet goes, right there. It takes four inches of sand to stop a rifle bullet. Tough, so what I did is I dumped all the energy in the ground right here. Does that make sense? If, I, if I'm up here and I dump around, especially law enforcement or whatever, you're in the community, that bullet keeps going. It leaves the range, all that stuff. Uh, the reason the military uses sandbags is because it stops bullets. So a lot of times you can get in here, and I can almost dig it out, find that bullet. thing is, if you're up here in your house, it's going to go through a wall, the roof. If you're, if you're an entry team, you got uh, people upstairs, it goes. If you're out in the economy or the civilian land, does that make sense? If you're doing this up, up high, what happens is you dump around, it goes out into the city. You don't control where that bullet goes. Here, I control where it goes. Does that make sense to you folks? So, a lot of thought processes on where we load, why we load. I get a lot of guys doing it, or gals, straight on. Well, they go into the shoot house, where are they loading? or fixing a malfunction, they're fixing it straight on. In America, how are the walls built? Nick, you're a construction guy too. It's drywall, you know, on the inside of the insulate. No, not on the inside. Yeah, not on the inside. So what happens is you got another entry team on a roof over there, and you dump around, it's just going right through. And so, again, think about your mediums and where you're taking that muzzle and pointing. That's just kind of a little infomercial right there. You'll see it on the videos and all that, but I just wanted to kind of get people in that mindset of always controlling that muzzle. So, questions right now? Why do they point it? Why do they come in like that? What's the theory? <laughs> no seals here, right? Former seals or anything? Okay. Nah, they're good people. They. What happened is John Shaw, mid south. John Shaw is a shotgunner. He taught him this, and it stuck. And so what happens is, you know, I don't like that because a, I don't have a stock well already. B, then they brought a guy in. I think Dieter. He's a hand combat guy. Great guy, but they directed their CQB tactics now off this versus low ready. Well, we go in to shoot people first, not do hand combat. So there's two different schools of thought out there. So I can take that muzzle, I can muzzle strike you, do some different things with the rifle. So what happens, they get caught at it, and you know, you always joke, well, so you won't shoot your boat. But that's not the, the key, because you shoot a helicopter there, it's not a good thing either. That hydraulic, you know, that, you know, dirt alert will go off. So it's, I don't like it also, because now I'm, I'm moving around your head with a hot weapon. If I crank an AR, especially a shorty off, right here next to your ear, bad juju. Uh, it, it'll you'll deafen somebody so there's not any good reasons otherwise it was taught one time everybody forgot why it was taught who taught it he was a three gunner he's a shotgun great shooter but he's not a tactical guy and so they just stuck with it and so and then you bring a hand combat guy and you say well teach us hand combat this is the way to hold your weapon well, I ain't going in to do hand combat first I'm going in there to shoot you first and then I'll do hand combat after that but I can still do it from a low ready position nobody has, has stepped up and said you know let's fix it and so they just keep doing it. And that's it. They're the only service that does it. Nobody else does it. Everybody else I know in special ops, low ready, straight trigger finger, mechanical, you know, safety on. So nothing against them. You're going to have problems. You're going to have accidents. See it happen. I've seen guys have ADs and shoot, you know, up through teams upstairs, teams downstairs, all sorts of stuff. Just, you know, bad safety happens. So it's got to dovetail into what we do here, right into a shoot house. You know, vehicle assaults, you know, fire maneuver, what you guys are doing tomorrow. So, again, just I want you to understand the rationale behind it. I've been doing this for about 30, 35 years now, so I've seen all the cycles of teaching. So, some guys teach and say, Well, this is new. No, it's not. The, you know, Israelis were doing that in 75. You know, the British were doing that back then. So, it came from somewhere, but people don't understand why you do what you do. So, I want you guys to understand the end game. Too. I just got told you, but there, there are reasons behind it. Everybody good? What I'm going to do is tell you here, it'll probably, st I got a floodplain on the other side, it'll probably land in the floodplain. But, I mean, I can, I, I mean, I can do yeah. it. I can change it. Well, as long as you I'm understand just so what, used to you, bringing it up. I know, and that's a problem. Because you build a muscle memory. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's one of those that's things. Exactly what it is. Yeah, well, we call it training scars. And, and so, to uh, undo it, you know, well, let me ask you this. You know, guys who came in this week, did you have any training scars? No, oh, yeah. No, no, no. And so, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And so, it takes two or three thousand reps to you know to imprint that and now I'm trying to undo it and it's 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 yeah. But 
no one's going to yell at you, you know, but kind of inform you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. As long as you're good, you understand. When you walk away, you know, it's big boy rules out there. You know, you understand the end game. So I'm happy. Questions? All right, let's go check our targets.